Hi Hello, Liberties! Ladies. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are featuring a recipe by, once again, Julia Pacheco called Tortellini Casserole. Mm -hmm. It's also can be like, I think Tortellini Bake, but it's casserole. Now, I did post a cooking video for this before the video, so please go check that out if you haven't done so already. Mm -hmm. And we're going to try it out. And we've also paired it with this side of a garden salad with lots of ranch dressing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Indeed. It's pretty good. Now, I will warn you folks, I'm a little bit sleepy today. Yeah, well, let's just say that last night was very interesting. I actually had an unexpected power outage. Like, I was in the middle of downloading some mods for a game, and I was like, did I just kill the power? <laughs> and you still had at least like so much more writing to do for your book and you know i was actually about to add subtitles for the doma video that i just posted as well and you can't do that unless you have a computer so internet so we went over to our in-laws house and been a few hours there and so the power came back at midnight and then we all went back home. <laughs> Except for Evan, who was asleep. It was actually a pretty decent sized power outage too. Um, there was like 14,000 people without power at one point. Well, it says a lot that even with that, I think it said like 97% of the city still had power. Mm -hmm. We should just look part of the 3% that weren't. So it was definitely a very interesting night. <laughs> But we are glad that the power outage didn't last very long, so we were able to save our food <laughs> in the refrigerator. <laughs> Evans actually um, tried this recipe today, and he ate a whole bowl full of it. He loves it. Mm -hmm. I don't blame him. It's meaty, it's good, 
Um, what you basically do, of course, you wash the cooking recipe, you cook the Italian sausage uh -huh. and onion together, and all of a crumble, and then you add a jar of Alfredo sauce and a jar of marinara sauce, and you mix all that together, and then you add the, what I use is tricolor tortellini, so it's like different colors, I got it from Kroger, some of it's like green and so forth, so it's kind of like cute. <laughs> mm -hmm. That make it a bit more appealing, and um, then you toss you know, the pasta into the sauce, and then you know, pour in a cup baking dish, the half of it mozzarella cheese, the other half of the pasta, and then top that with mozzarella cheese, and then bake it. So it combines Alfredo marinara sauce and Italian sausage. No wonder I like it. <laughs> Got a lot of my favorites. It's a really good combo. Now I'll tell you, I have really been enjoying making more home cooked recipes lately. Like I think so far this past week I have made doma, I've made this. I plan to also make some um, baked ziti in a few days as well for another collaboration from the ASMR channel. And I'm actually enjoying it more than I thought. I love filming the cooking process and actually eating this. I can't blame you. These are delicious. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm just definitely on a roll with watching Julia Pacheco's recipes too. Like, she just actually came up with another new video today. And um, one of the, I think one of the recipes had like chicken and rice and something in it. That means there's a recipe I want to try out for myself. I'm not mm -hmm. going to tell you guys because, well, one, I don't want to spoil you. And two, believe it or not, sometimes, like, you know, we have issues, you know, sourcing the ingredients or, yeah, like, issues filming. And I hate to, like, you know, let everyone know that we're going to be doing something and then something you know, goes wrong. So yeah, Evan tried this recipe this morning. He loved it. Like, I know he loves pasta dishes like spaghetti and mac and cheese, but I was not expecting him to love this. I'm so happy that, you know, he fell in love with tortellini. Stupid carrot. <laughs> it wouldn't get in my mouth. <laughs> I definitely want to add that to our, like, you know, my good list, you know? Mm hmm. That was del that's delicious. It's super easy, it's super affordable, and also super yummy. <laughs> mm hmm. I love it. I never did really picture a pasta this, though, where you mix Alfredo sauce and marinara sauce in one. That was kind of. Something new, yeah. You know? Oh, sounds the same way. Like when you said, I was like Alfredo <laughs> and marinara. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And hey, it actually works pretty well. So yeah, Julia Pacheco's channel has turned out to be one of my favorite cooking channels. But if you guys have any more recommendations for people for me to watch for recipes and stuff or inspiration, feel free to comment them down below and I'll take a look at their pages. Yeah, I will admit that although I'm generally a fan more like reading rather than watching like I like to learn things by like watching, by like reading a, you know, like a website rather than watching a YouTube video. I feel it's different when you're cooking because, how should I put it, be able to see the blow by blow of them actually making it is very helpful. Sometimes when I've read a recipe, I kind of like feel like I might make a mistake more because I'm trying to picture what it is they're trying to instruct me to do. Like, you know, there's different kinds of words and terms for cooking that I'm still like trying to 
I guess say learn. Um, I'm trying to think of one, but it's not coming to mind right now. But if I can actually see the person step by step cooking the food, I can remember how to do it easier, and it's much easier to understand. I feel like so you're right on that. And up and had swimming practice again yesterday, um, Saturday, and he is doing really well. Like he's doing backstrokes, um, I think, like last time. And um, I'm still like thinking about that part where he was floating in the water and the guy kept like moving him back and forth. <laughs> I thought that was cute. He loved that. He was just like smiling and laughing the whole time. <laughs> Indeed. Maybe I'll take after as, you know, on top of that. Mm -hmm. Like, become an amazing swimmer. And then be subjected to cold pools forever. <laughs> <laughs> well... I hope they, you know, warm the pools up. I think I think the reason they keep the pools cold, cold like someone wrote a comment was to kind of help like performance better or something like that. It kind of keeps you more alert. I'm not sure. I have to go back and read that comment. Yeah, I remember reading something like that. Mm -hmm. Not sure if it's worth it, but at least it has some benefit than other than like torturing the kids. Mm -hmm. If I can avoid it, I'd like him to you know, go to like warm pools. Like, I can't wait until he's old enough to like go into like a jacuzzi or a hot tub. It'll blow his mind. Mm -hmm. I love those. I think the first time I ever went into a, it was like a spa, like you know, the hot tubs. Mm -hmm. I was actually about ten, <laughs> and this was at um, uh, this was when my dad took me to Panama City at one time when I was about like 10 years old, even mm -hmm. for him. And I remember that was also the time that I was looking above me and I saw a bunch of dragonflies everywhere. <laughs> so it was like a dragonfly colony. Of <laughs> some sort. Mm -hmm. And those things were flying everywhere. But. I did. I, what I kept doing was like I kept going from the main pool to the hot tub because I was trying to like balance my temperature. It's like I'm too cold and then I get too hot. <laughs> so I just like kept switching back and forth and yeah. One of the things I read in the comments section that kind of, you know, befuddles me is like, why don't, like, basically I was like, you know, why don't you know all this stuff because you're married? We are married. But that doesn't mean we know every detail of each of our lives. Like, we know the main stuff. It's normal for couples to still keep learning things about each other even years after they've met, they get married. I mean, someone mentioned that. I mean, mm -hmm. it's pretty typical. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Indeed. I think that a lot of them you know, have this unrealistic view of what it means to be married. Mm -hmm. That to them it means that like, you're this perfect you know, in love soulmates who know everything about each other and there's no secrets ever that have yet to be uncovered. Well, in reality, you're probably going to like, how should I put this? I've been married to Crystal for going on seven years now. Mm -hmm. Before then, she had 21 years of life experience. <laughs> Even if I spent every minute of every day you know, learning about you know, her past, I'd be, it'd take like another 14 years for me to you know, learn mm -hmm. everything. I know the main stuff. I know it's important to her. Like... For example, that story just now about the hot tubs probably wasn't terribly important to her. Yeah. But it's a good story that I'm you know, glad to share. Like, and these stories about your childhood too, like 
I didn't know that. I know we've talked about swimming quite a bit and stuff mm. like that, but I didn't know you were like into, you know, that certain parts of it. Mm. Mm. Well, let me tell you something that, uh, about me and hot tubs. We had this family friend when you know, we were in Virginia who had a hot tub, and I'd love to you know, go visit him. And he actually got me into like, you know, the Baldur's Gate series of Dungeons and Dragons because he you know, had the copies and he shared them with me. He was a good family friend. We were like... Mm-hmm. What was your first impression of Baldur's Gate? Hmm. I think my first impression is actually Baldur's Gate 2. Because a lot of people might know the you know, first one, but the second one's like the more common one. I'm trying to figure out how to say this because the first version is really hard. Yeah. Especially in the higher difficulties. Like when I'm trying to Iron Man it, for those who aren't in the know, like Iron Manning means like um, if I die, I start the game over from the beginning. Level oh, one. yeah. Like when you're playing Doom, for example, he puts on the hardest level, and every time he dies, he has to start over again. So it's definitely a lot more challenging. Mm-hmm. It's fun, though. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like mm-hmm. in Baller's Gate 1, like. A regular hit on the on the highest non ridiculous difficulty. There's this one difficulty just plain designed for like cheese fighting. <laughs> what I mean by cheese fighting is like if you're not using the cheesiest tactics imaginable, you just die over and over because <laughs> you, know, you get tons of health are almost impossible to hit and do ridiculous damage. Like I'm trying to give a good comparison, like. In the second hardest difficulty, there's this one section in the first you know, tutorial area where you fight some rats. And then, you, you know, in the second hardest difficulty, like, they might do two four damage. And one hit of yours will kill them. In the hardest difficulty, you can't kill them. Yeah. <laughs> well, then how do you move forward with the game? Like... I think you have to basically skip all the combat stuff so you can, like, level up or something. I have to read, like, guides or something on this. Wow. <laughs> Like, I remember how Morrowind starts out, for example, like, you don't have to fight anybody, but you arrive in this town on a ship, and basically, you know, you know, goes through the tutorials and stuff with you about how, like, you know, you can pick up items, it talks about weapons and stuff, but you don't have to fight anybody after that. Mm-hmm. It just seems like each game starts out differently. Not too, like... But the original Baldur's Gate, it actually had more of a tutorial than, you know, Baldur's Gate 2. Like, Baldur's Gate 2 is more of a, we'll put you in a relatively easy area. A creepy area, but relatively easy. And you just kind of explore for yourself. In Baldur's Gate 1, you literally have these characters who are actually tutors. Like, a bunch of them are all (laughs) dressed in green robes. So it's like... Teacher Central. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they'll teach you stuff like how to pick up items and how to save the game. It kind of sounds like Baldur Gate 1 would be more like Morrowind style. Mm-hmm. And then the second one was more combat oriented, right? The first okay. dungeon. Like after, first dungeon. Like, <laughs> after you get out of the first dungeon, then it opens up more. Like, I think there are, and there are actually mods that are built to just skip the entire first dungeon. <laughs> well, that's no fun. What I mean, you're taking away from the fun of the game? I don't know if I agree with that. You see, the dungeon gets pretty repetitive. And for like people who are really into it, they'll like create like bunches and bunches of, you know, characters and stuff. And like roll, mm-hmm. redo it each time. Mm-hmm. And if they don't, you know, have a mod like that, they have to do a dungeon every single time. Like, a lot of the fun of the game is when the world opens up and you start doing the quests and you start, you know, finding out the stories and stuff. And the first dungeon's pretty, like, it's a little bit, you know, open, but it's still a pretty linear plot. Yeah, um, it's just like, all these games that I've played over the years... 
I'm not swap video games a lot, but it just depends on, I guess, like the style of the game um, and whatnot to kind of like figure out, like, hey, this is it going to be more adventure based? Is it more puzzle based and stuff? Or is it more combat? Now, I felt like with the later Elder Scrolls games, I don't, a lot of puzzles and stuff, but I did feel like it was more combat involved. I guess there's like more to the combat system because they did upgrade it over time. So there was more to the combat system for those games than there was for like Morrowind, for example. Morrowind I felt like was more based on the story, like you're trying to save the you know, province from this Dagoth Ur god and you know just like more lore and stuff. You were getting to know what was based on the history of the game, what like happened in the past and and all that stuff. And honestly I kinda like those games more because that's probably was one of my favorite games. Actually my it is my favorite game. But it felt like it was like more story oriented instead of focused on combat. And say so, don't get me wrong no, it's not that I don't like combat games, but I do like games that have like more, you know, puzzles and stories and stuff. I love stories. Who doesn't love a good story? I enjoy when there's a good story involved. The puzzles, I can see why they're less, you know, uh, expected or, you know, focus on. Simply because the combat, there's a lot of different ways to handle it. Yeah. With a puzzle, there's generally one. You solve the puzzle or you don't. And if you have to pass a puzzle and you don't know what the puzzle is, either you have to Google it online mm -hmm. or you fail. Right, exactly. Like, there's been a lot of times that I might be stuck on a puzzle or I'll have to end up, like, looking online about how to solve it. And I kind of feel like I'm cheating doing that. Like, I'm not using my brain to figure out what I'm supposed to. But, you know, hey, sometimes we gotta do what we gotta do if we want to move forward with the game. Mm -hmm. But anyway guys, that's all the time we have for today. I hope y'all enjoyed watching this video and us trying out some delicious tortellini bake. The recipe will be included in the description box below if you'd like to make it. And please also be sure to check out Julia Pacheco's channel. I've really been enjoying it lately and trying out some of her delicious recipes. And I just love her bright, vibrant you know, vibe and feeling personality you get when you watch her videos. It sounds really welcoming. <laughs> Anyway, if y'all still so aren't already, be sure to click that red button down below to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell raise notifications. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Mm -hmm. This is Crystal. And Charles. Sunny up. Bye, Bye birdies. birdies.